The forest is a place of terror. Within these trees lie horrors that are beyond your greatest nightmares. Grass, claustrophobia, rabid beasts, and the scariest of all, black people. Today I've been dropped straight into the forest, and I'm currently being held at gunpoint to play the game for 12 hours straight. Now 12 hours sounds like a lot, and it is, especially when you consider that you can beat the game in around mm, 20 minutes. That's why we need to stay occupied. Aside from having one of the best survival open worlds of all time, the forest also has achievements. There's easy achievements, hard achievements, and achievements with friends. I have none. So our goal is to try and knock out as many of these achievements as humanly possible. Might seem easy given the 12 hour time frame, but I got news for you buddy boy, you're dead wrong. Let's get down to brass stats. Daylight is burning, and with each passing second, darkness grows closer and closer. The island is a dangerous place, but at night, it becomes far worse. My first objective? Get the fuck away from this plane crash. Loud noises have a tendency to attract unwanted attention, and unwanted attention leads to certain doom. Luckily for me, I managed to find shelter in this yacht. Well shit, a yacht? Let's get the frick out of here! Mm. Now aside from acting as a base to save the game and sleep in, the yacht also has another function. It's used in one of the 45 achievements in the game, so to keep track of these, I've divided them into four categories. Hunting, Foraging, Multiplayer, and Misc. Hunting usually involves killing stuff, Foraging involves exploration or farming, Multiplayer is self-explanatory, and Misc is anything that claims to be an achievement but is more of a nuisance. Now the great thing about all of these is that you can stack them similar to Minecraft. Sleep in this yacht? Check. Survive one night? Check. I also managed to get my hands on a pot. Now the pot is very useful since it allows you to store liquid diarrhea. Kill him. Kill him now. Now unfortunately, this game doesn't have a permadeath boat. Oh really? But it does have a hard difficulty, and as you've seen, these bitches do a lot of damage on hard difficulty. For that reason, it's important to gather an arsenal of weapons if you wish to live for more than 5 minutes. And the majority of weapons in the game can be found in caves. However, I wasn't too keen on visiting any caves just yet. So for now, I set up a base on this ridge and started construction on a gazebo. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have a gazebo permit, and as a result, I was pulled up on by the authorities. But I have never been one to obey the law, so I stood my ground against these assholes. On second thought, police brutality can be quite persuasive. Now caves are pretty goddamn scary. You can't see a thing, there's monsters, and this stupid fucking jumps here always fu- But they also contain equipment necessary for progression, and on top of that, they help out with achievements. Fortunately for me, the cave I decided to enter just so happened to contain one of the greatest weapons of all time. Aside from that, it also has a climbing axe used in Modern Warfare 2. Now there's 3 items you need if you want to beat the game. Each of these items are found in various caves on the island, but it doesn't matter because one of our achievements requires us to explore every cave in the game. Now this is a pretty monumental task, so I think we should hold off on it for now. On second thought, those caves don't look so bad. The thing about most of the achievements in this game is that they're pretty dumb, so we're just gonna focus on the more difficult ones rather than the inconvenient ones. There are 10 caves on a map, but wait, that's it. A map. We have none. This game isn't like Sonorica where the biomes are so different you know exactly where you are at all times. The trees here look like the trees here and there and here and everywhere, but not to worry. If you follow the yellow brick road over to the edge of the island and into this village, there just so happens to be a map right in this cave. As well as... <gasps> Hairspray? Is your relationship falling apart? Does your wife look at you with disgust and disdain? Do people jump out a window on the second you enter a room? You ever think maybe you're the problem? Well, you know what? You are the problem. Look at the top of your head for crying out loud, you bald ass b- But don't worry because I have the solution for you. Hairspray. Hairspray is a revolutionary product created in the Amazon rain jungle that aims to cure balding in middle-aged lonely men. How does it work? You give me money and I give you this, the answer to all your problems. Call the number on your screen right now and for only $29.99, you can have access to this incredible product. What's that? 
Don't want to use it on your hair? Well, why not use it to commit mass genocide? <laughs> now, cave exploration in this game is downright petrifying. Your only light source is this dimpy ass lighter, and as I mentioned before, there are monsters. But fortunately, these monsters lack brain cells. Don't get me wrong, the chainsaw is amazing, but I like the bow more. Step 1. Find an innocent bystander. Step 2. Jump on this rock. Step 3. Rain hell from above. After which you can consume the flesh of your victims and use their bones to craft armor. Follow these principles, and cave exploration becomes an absolute breeze. Now back to the achievements. Remember when I mentioned that you can stack a lot of these achievements? While exploring all of these caves, I was also working towards 5 other achievements. Find the pieces of Timmy's toy, kill 100 cannibals, find all the passengers, beat the game, and collect 5 cassettes. Multitasking has never been this easy, and neither has archery. By now I had already crossed off a vast majority of caves, and the only ones that remained were Cave 7 and Cave 10. The problem is, both these caves are the endgame caves, and I wasn't exactly ready to beat the game just yet. But wait, turns out there's more. Did you know that if you zoom out ever so slightly, there are a whopping 3 caves in the ocean. You know what else is in the ocean? Sharks. Just sharks. Now these caves contain jack shit, but we still have 8 hours to go, so I kinda don't have a choice. I went ahead and built a raft and set sail out into the deep black sea. Luckily for me, there's these pretty convenient landmarks that tell you exactly where the entrance to the cave is, so thank god. Well, that was fun, it was a big waste of time, but guess what? We're officially done with all cave exploration, for now at least. And now that we're armed to the teeth with some of the best equipment in the game, it's time to take back the surface. The next achievement, Trophy Hunter. Trophy Hunter involves hunting each species of wildlife on the island and then mounting their head on a wooden spike. There's 11 different heads in the game and each one requires precision and experience that only a skilled hunter, like myself, possesses. The first animal, the elusive, Tortoise. Don't let its slow demeanor fool you. These bastards are cunning and slyer than a fox. Hit them once and they close up like Fort Knox. For the most part, this achievement is pretty easy, until I encountered my greatest opponent, the raccoon. Some backstory. I have about 30 hours on the forest. I played a lot with my friends back in the day. Why is this important? Well, in those 30 hours of playtime, I had never once seen a raccoon. I didn't even know there were raccoons in the game until I read the achievement. But don't worry, I'm an experienced hunter. That ain't a fucking raccoon. Oh my bad, raccoons are nocturnal. Well, you know what else is nocturnal? This piece of shit. I kid you not, I spent 2 hours. Two hours searching for one goddamn raccoon. And guess what? I didn't find it. The most frustrating part was walking to each quote unquote spawn just for a rabbit to spawn instead. Now the wiki claims that the hardest head to acquire is the goose head. Well guess what game, at least I know geese exist. The issue with geese is that they have a habit of swimming around on the surface of the water and then flying away. Now I know what you're thinking, well just kill them from afar. Too bad. If you shoot a goose in the water, he sinks to the bottom of the pond, and thanks to the amazing game mechanics, you can't actually get the goose when he's underwater. Alright, no big deal. Let's just scare him onto land. Oh my god. That means we're left with one solution. Shoot the bastards out of the sky. Now the issue with this is that I suck. So instead we're gonna take the wiki's advice and make a pretty dank looking platform over the water. I think I'm starting to get a headache. By now the trees were starting to get to me. I was on the brink of collapse and I feared I was about to become just as insane as the cannibals around me. But in my darkest hour, the good lord sent his angel to lift my spirits. He sent the angel, Gabriel. Hello. At long last, I wasn't alone anymore. I had found refuge in the form of friendship with this random Indian man. And his presence not only brought me sanity, but two more achievements. However, my newfound friendship was in danger of being extinguished just as quickly as it was ignited. For the tribes around us did not appreciate my happiness, 
Well, I guess that's too goddamn bad because I happen to have a chainsaw bit. Remember my division of achievements? Now that Gabriel was here, I could actually complete the multiplayer section of these challenges. The issue was the only one that remained was the revive one player challenge. And since Gabriel had fallen asleep at the wheel, I thought, maybe, do you think he'd notice? No, I couldn't do that to my best friend, the one who brought me back from the brink of absolute insanity. I couldn't just stab him in the back. What kind of asshole do you take me for? Now at this point, we're nearing the end of the playthrough. We're approximately 8 hours in and we're this close to becoming the king of the forest. And if you're wondering where all that time went, the vast majority of it was spent walking from point A to point B. Unfortunately, this game has no methods of transportation, which got me thinking. I should have played Sons of the Forest instead. Now for those of you who do want me to play Sons of the Forest, I will not be doing so. Not yet, at least. They literally changed the ending a few months ago. The game isn't fully released yet. Anyways, it's time to go shark hunting. Interestingly enough, you can't find sharks anywhere in the ocean. They only spawn in a few locations. The location I chose was the yacht, because there's actually two sharks here. And guess what? As luck would have it, I didn't find shit. Holy fuck! That is indeed a shark. That was easy enough. Eat mushrooms, check. Blow up six trees, check. Blow up six fish. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. All we have to do is get the dynamite from here and throw it in this pond. Let's see, there's one, two... Oh, no, no. The next bane of my existence, commercial fishing. On paper, blowing up six fish for one stick of dynamite sounds pretty easy. But guess what? It's not. Surprise, surprise. Let me explain fish. Fish spawn in pond. There are many pond. Go to pond. When fish spawn, fish spawn in spawns of two. To find more fish, find bigger pond. Wait for fish to spawn. Six fish spawn. Fish too far away to get boomed by dynamite. Wait for fish in one spawn to swim closer to fish in other spawn. Oh fuck, fish despawn. Now before you go down into the comments, yes, fish in this game usually spawn- I've said spawn too much. Fish are usually summoned in groups of 3 to 4, but these are in small ponds. What's this? I count 2 fish in this small pond. What the fuck? You wanna know the best part about hard mode in this game? The amount of animals is decreased by 66%. Oh. My. God. Alright alright, calm down. We still have some options. Fish traps. We capture the fish in these traps and then light the match and explode it all at once. One small issue, these traps don't work at all. Yikes. Okay, the wiki advises us to go to Goose Lake. Apparently there's a ton of fish over there. Um, where? Oh god, we need to take stronger measures. Let's go to Reddit. Aha! Caves. Why didn't I think of that before? Look right here, I count at least four dozen salmon all piled up. It's time to show these fools why their mothers never loved them. Huh? Wait. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe it was a bad throw. Two challenges. I was beaten by two challenges. That bitch ass raccoon and a couple of fish. Goddamn. Maybe I wasn't the greatest survivalist of all time. What was I thinking? I wasn't cut out for this shit. I'm supposed to be rescuing my son and instead I was building a gazebo. I mean, it's not like I can just change the game mode back to. Oh. By now we had conquered a vast majority of the island and its outskirts, and the only things left to do was to enter Cave 7 and beat the game. If you've played Forest, you'd know that Cave 7 does not fuck around. After all, Cave 7 isn't just Cave 7, it's also Cave 10. It's Cave 17. Cave 17 contains a monumental amount of enemies, which is why I needed to sharpen my skills. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have to look far for some practice. With those three mutants vanquished, I knew I was ready to take on the endgame. Ah! I made my way over to Cave 7 and began clearing it out. This time I had to utilize all my previously acquired knowledge to clear the way. Explosives, fire, chainsaw, and cheeses. And it didn't take long for me to find my way into the lab. Once there I was able to check off four more challenges. These included finding Timmy's dumbass soy, exploring all these caves, setting off these sprinklers, and buying overpriced coffee. Oh look, it's Timmy! And oh look, it's Tammy! Fight. 
That's what happens when you can't draw for shit. Even the machine doesn't like it. Now the canon ending of the forest involves taking down a plane and stealing another child to save Timmy. There's only one minor hiccup with that plan. Me personally, when I wake up in the morning, I see a brown man staring right back at me. Why is this important? Well Timmy here looks like Vin Diesel. You get what I'm saying? This ain't my fucking kid. And so, Eric LeBlanc successfully shot down the ancient artifact that had left nothing but destruction in his wake. He mourned the loss of Timmy, his only son, for a whole four seconds. And despite this horrendous loss of not only his son, but his relationship with his cheating wife Miranda, Eric kept his head up high, as all kings of the forest do. He built a new life for himself in the forest, the island that had tried to swallow him alive so many times. He'd finally calmed the heart of his wild beast, and had turned it into his sanctuary, for all cannibals and wildlife alike. But every night, when Eric went to sleep, there was still one feeling he couldn't escape. A feeling that gnawed on the back of his cerebral cortex, keeping him up and waking him in a pool of sweat. He might have killed a random 12 year old girl, but he knew deep down, there was something worse. Something that stalked the night. Waiting. Watching. And scheming.